Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good out there. I'm doing just great. Just want to thank everybody for their comments on my last community post. But this video is a unboxing and you can kind of see by the way it is packaged. Um, it's a long way from home. All right, so this is a long way from home, and as you could tell with the packaging, you know, you kind of guess where it came from. And, uh, yeah, so I've been looking at this guitar for quite a while now, and finally uh, decided, well, let's check it out. And I'm kind of interested into seeing some of these Chinese guitars and what they do with them now. Um these guys do customs and this is supposed to be a custom and it is a replica of one of the kind of famous guitars that uh uh well let's just open it up all right because you kind of see right now that it's basically a les paul so let's go ahead and get it out of its packaging over here all right, so what we have here is a replica of the Slash Les Paul Snake Pit guitar. And I do have to say that, you know, it is, uh, yeah, it's trying to be a replica. Close, but really no cookie. Color's a little bit off, I could tell you that much. Um, this is more of a red than the actual original. And... Looking at the inlays here, I will have to bring up a photo of the actual snake pit and you'll be able to see how the inlays look, especially with the uh, sizing and the way that they have it here. And, you know, look at here. So they're trying to get away with hiding the logo that is on the headstock. Now, again, I'm not for the whole fake Gibson thing. Um, and I will change this to chips in like I have done on my others, but uh, Yeah, so let's get this off of here, and it'll be a surprise, right? Oh, look at there. It says Gibson Yeah Yeah, no, that'll be removed. It'll be changed, but uh, yeah, so custom less ball custom shop and uh, So what we got here is a plastic plastic nut perloid inlays and we'll see how that uh, how they are as far as what they're supposed to be like gold hardware um, yeah it's probably all around cheap China shit and uh, let's see here do they show like a side over here where you can see that nope it's gonna be a veneer yeah so everything looks pretty good on it it doesn't look like it's I'm gonna hide the going up on the headstock more because you know what it's going to say it looks pretty good i mean just the bones of it are halfway decent um i could tell that well this here has been glued on this has been put on top of the finish and glued on and then tried to clear coat it and it did kind of a shitty job on it so this is either going to be probably wood um with maybe a silk screen on it because that's kind of looks like it's the colors and the lines are pretty sharp so if i go in on that and take a look at it yeah you can kind of see that didn't do that good of a job but all in all it is a guitar and uh they run from eBay, so the seller was trying to sell this for like 400 and some odd dollars, but uh, it was like, let's make a deal, so it was like two something I gave him for it, and he bit it, and you know, that's what I got. It's not bad to look at. Um, it will need a little bit of polishing. It will need a little bit of dusting, uh, cleaning, because there is a lot of dust on the headstock, and uh, you know, it will need a new nut. I have some Wilkinson's um, classic humbuckers in gold coming. Um, yeah, I'll probably do some bridge work on this and put a new bridge on it. 
I don't know. I'm not going to turn it too far off of what it's supposed to look like as far as being a uh, Les Paul that was, you know, one of Slash's. But as far as the inlays go on the neck, now, there was uh, a video that I watched a while back. It was showing what the inlays are supposed to look like, especially the scales going down the body and how they're supposed to be even with the frets. So I'm going to go check that out and kind of do a little bit of a comparison. So I'm going to take a photo of this, and you guys will see, and I'll bring it up on the video. Inlay work on the neck is nowhere near being correct. Neither is the Snake Pit logo and the headstock between the Gibson logo and the decal. So although I have bought quite a few of the so-called Gibson type style guitars, um, and I really haven't found one that is uh, pretty bad. Although this replica here of what is supposed to be Slash's uh, snake pit is pretty bad now again you know the finish is not the right color the flame maple top is not correct the logos on the body as far as the snake goes and the bone um is not correct either uh you're missing some detail work here like they have the shadowing here but they don't have the hair coming off on each side of the hat the hat itself has got a little bit of a um it's just too dark it's too black there's not enough detail in it there's supposed to be some striping inside of it uh of detail there is not even the cigarette doesn't look right and you can tell that i can kind of stick my fingernail underneath this and if I probably try really hard, I could probably pull it right off. But again, you know, I'm going to kind of fix this a little bit and add the hair where it's supposed to be. Now, on the bone itself, well, you can see some of the hair bits on the bone, but it's not coming out from underneath the head over here. It's not coming out from underneath the head over here. So what I'm going to end up doing is probably give this thing a nice scuff down and add in some of the parts that are missing just to make it that much more better i guess now the inlay ends on the neck all right obviously from comparing the two photos you could really see just how off they are as far as you know the way that in between the fret and the inlay it kind of goes on an angle a little bit uh this is supposed to be wider and kind of moved a little bit more uh yeah just the perloid look itself it's just not correct and some of the coloring of the inlays too um they don't match up with the original they try i have to say they try but not really you know too good all in all you know this would be the last time that i purchase any type of a chips and guitar and i know i've said this before but this is going to be the last time uh it's not bad for the bones if you want to work on it change it up a little bit i really don't think that uh, i'm going to put too many expensive upgrades on this thing replace the pickups that'll be one of them maybe change out the pots on it and the three-way switch but as far as any other mods go that'll probably be it you know wilkinson's uh classic humbuckers you know they're not that expensive and it might be a better upgrade than what's already on here now i haven't found a seller or a factory that was making some of these guitars um to be bad yet up until i found this one now from the headstock down yeah there's some issues with it but those issues can be corrected and other than the inlays on the neck um and the bones aren't too bad okay the inlay looks pretty good it ain't right but it looks good it's not too bad the headstock on the other hand is where this guitar is kind of like screwed up i wouldn't say screwed up to where it's unplayable but screwed up in a way where it's not right and it's not the next fault i already checked that all right so as you can see here i'm looking at a uh bubble level all right and she is she is level. I mean, it's right. The bubble is right where it's supposed to be. I removed the nut and checked out the surface underneath the nut, and it's pretty flat. It's pretty pretty straightforward. 
Here's where the kicker is, and I don't know if you can kind of tell it just by looking over here or not, but if I take this and I put this on the neck right there, you see where that bubble went to. That bubble disappeared. The headstock has got a little bit of a twist to it, and it's because these are put on a belt sander when they're sanding them down, and it's not like um, they have that much control over um, the way that they're sanding this. So when they ended up sanding this headstock to get that angle of, on it, uh, they were more heavy on one side than they were on the other as far as uh, putting pressure on this thing. And you can kind of tell a little bit by looking at it. So if I take this guitar and I hold it up like this, and you can kind of see this side here where my thumb is, is kind of drooping a little bit on the downside. Yeah, so it's not going to make the guitar unplayable or impossible to set up. You know, when I do the nut work, I'm going to have to slope it down a little bit more so the string doesn't bind in the nut at all. But uh, other than that, I guess it's all right. It's not great. But again, it's not bad, and you get what you pay for. You know, you pay for something that is a cheap Chinese replica, and again, you know, that's what you get. Something cheap, something Chinese, and crap. So that's a little bit of this guitar and some of the goods and bads about it. Um, this will probably be, it will be a player. I will make it into a player. But uh, it's also going to be kind of maybe a show or show piece or whatnot. This here, I am going to fix it and get it to where it's supposed to be. And uh, I will re-clear coat this whole top. Um, I don't think I'm going to do any epoxy resin because this is kind of built up. You know, it's, it's got a lip to it. So, or kind of like a high side thing. So I'm not going to sit there and uh, fill it in because if I fill it in with the epoxy all this that's open is also going to fill in too and i don't want that but i am going to fix it and these guys are dirty as fuck i mean this this thing has got dust all over the place all righty so that's my story i'm probably going to have another unboxing tomorrow i've been playing around with um i've been playing around with meters and stuff for audio and uh well i'm not going to say too much i got something coming tomorrow that i can compare to something that i already have so you guys take it easy have a good one and i will catch up with you all later